Hello, hey. hello. Hi. Hello, hello. How are you today? Oh, top shape. Top shape, good. I see all these people coming on. This is good. Say hello, you guys. Welcome, everyone. So today I forgot to schedule the, the live, but we're we're there. We're there. So hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hello. Oh, so well, I, the numbers going up. I think they're gonna find us. They'll find us. <laughs> yes. Hey, Mary Jean. Hello. Oh, and La Laura's here from South Africa. Hello, Lara. Lou. This name I have to like concentrate. Ven Venicia. Hello, Andrea. Did we Nadia, say that right? <laughs> Kathy, Susan, Denise. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Oh, she's she sneaking in from work. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's good to sneak in with us. Hey, June. So welcome for our little Tuesday cookie film <laughs> with Amy and I'm Marlene. And if you uh, miss it, you can or miss something, you can rewatch. The lives are saved on both Facebook and on YouTube. You can rewatch them. Oh, some warm weather for Tracy. Yeah, Tracy, it's 55 here too today. It's beautiful. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Look so at that. It's slowly warming up. Hello, Andrea. It's slowly warming up here as well. Hello, Kathy. Um, I, like I was saying to you, Amy, I'm, I'm concerned. Now, we got so much snow. I'm concerned that if it gets warm too fast that we're going to end up with, like, flooding. Right. right. Yeah, you know, pandemic, a flood. It's perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> did I share with you that we have the um, cicada coming that only comes out, like, every 20 years? Well, so I my, heard about them. Yeah, my I state mean, is... One of the states that gets hit really hard and they're super loud and they destroy the trees. So why shouldn't we have that in 2021? Hi, Amber. <laughs> hello, hello. Well, maybe the potato will breed Hi, with Amber. those giant hornets that were three <laughs> inches long. <laughs> Wait, those bees that we got last year that were, um, where were they from? I don't remember, but remember the killer bees that we yeah, had swarms of? Well, maybe yeah. they can get together in 2022, we'll have babies. <laughs> South Africa, she's saying it's it's 75 degrees. That's wow. nice. I oh, hope everyone is doing well today. It's it's Tuesday, so it's still hopeful for your week. <laughs> oh, I could be that Hawaii looks sounds pretty good. Yeah, let's go to Hawaii. You know, Marlon, when you're ready to go, I there, right? say if I was American and I had the choice to go live anywhere in all the states, that's probably the one I'd go to. You go to Hawaii. I have a friend that um, lives in Hawaii. She has a condo on the, like in the mountains of Hawaii. Um, and I guess a rental that she does near the beach. So I told my husband, that's the next vacation. Oh, then yeah. I thought, well, no, that won't really be a vacation. Let's go do a cookie um, retreat or something in oh, Hawaii. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you to last week's uh the people who sent stars, thank you very much. And if you're um, wondering how that works, it's basically a virtual tip jar. And you can find that in the comment section. And so, yeah, thank you for that. And I like that. What? That um, graphic you just put up. That, I've never seen that. That's really nice. I, I just made it because people were asking where to find it. So oh, I, nice. I created a little illustration to help people find it. Denise, people ate the cicadas. Are you kidding? Is that for real? I'm not doing that. My dogs are not doing that. We're staying in the house. I don't care. I can I can handle a few more months in the house. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Anne Marie. Can yeah, you imagine? Well, uh, can you imagine my hairdo? If what did you say? I think it's better to not know. Like this morning on the radio, they were talking about how we eat insects ground up in our coffee beans. Like we don't need to know that. Yeah, don't know? tell me that. <laughs> no. No, I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, oh, you're making basket cookies today. Cool. I'm glad. Sit, post pictures, you guys. We'd love to see your pictures. So did Chocolate you covered... start today? Um, yeah. Is that okay? Because I was going to demo the tip. I kind of um, got some messages that I forgot to demo that Ruffle 80 tip. Um, so so I thought I'd show that. Is that all right? Yeah, let's start. Amy's going to kick it off. All right, so guys, so your camera you, dance, Amy. Oh, yeah, let me do that. I was just going to start and you weren't going to see anything. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Did you see in the feed just now, someone said that they eat chocolate covered cicadas? We're, we're not going to be doing that at my house. <sighs> Um, we are one of the states that gets, um, I assume we will get them bad again because we had them really bad last time. Um, and they were super, super loud. All right. How's that look? Am I in the right? It looks like, uh, yeah, well, awesome. now it's in there, but it looks good. Yes. Okay. Let me pull this back just a little bit. Okay. So last time you guys, what I'm really going to show you today is stamping on cookies. I want to get you started on that. Let me put this down just a little bit. Um, because there are a few little tips that will really help you out if you've never done stamping on cookies. So that's really what I'm going to show you. But quickly, I'm going to show you what that ruffle number 80 tip does that I did not get to demo last week. Can you see that? So last week during the live, Amy showed a whole bunch of flowers. So you can rewatch it. It's in the playlist. And you can like go see everything she did last week, all the royal icing flowers. So what's really cool about this tip is it's one of the... Um, it's got on the end, it's a, a circle, which I would say is comparable to a number three tip. But what's cool is this little slice down the side. Can you guys see that? Hey, Fabiola. Hey, Jeremy. So I thought I would just quickly show you this. This is not what we're doing today, but I did feel bad that I forgot to show this to you last week. So we're going to do one of these really quickly. Um, first thing, if you want to make those pretty poppy cookies... Best to make some royal icing transfer centers so you can knock these out fast while the icing is wet on the poppy part because then you can push this down in and kind of get it down in the icing instead of trying to adhere it to the top. So I made a bunch of these ahead of time, popped them in the dehydrator for about an hour. They're already popping off the paper. They're nice and smooth on the back. And I used... Um, the, the little black non -parets. these are the little tiny, like three millimeters. Can you guys oh, see you that? Kind of them. Yeah. Yes. I use a lot of these. These are great for lots of different things. Um, so I pulled those out. I do want to show you one trick that I have learned with this tip. So if you set it down for any amount of time, of course, any of that icing could crust, and then you're not going to get those nice smooth flowers. So I keep my, um, my spray bottle handy yeah. it's got distilled water in it and i usually just give it a quick shot of water then flip it over a little squeeze and it basically is like washing off the edge of that tip and you can see now i've got clear flow all the way through the tip right that's a great so, tip. rather than sticking a sharp implement in there or doing anything like that that's just the easiest way that i have found to do this all right mm -hmm. so last week i don't know if i mentioned it but i had straightened up my workstation before we started mark and I couldn't find my flower nails, which is why I did everything flat last week. But this is just a basic flower nail. They're like $2.50 at any of the craft stores or Walmart or any of that. So watch my tip so you can see how this works, okay? So if, I, if you're looking at the tip, you want to roll it until it's face down to the cookie. And because I'm making poppies, I want to make that, I want to make two layers. Do you see how there's an inside layer and an outside layer? So visually, if I'm on the center of my flower nail and I'm looking at how far my tip comes, I know that for my first round of petals, I want to pull out a quarter of an inch because I want them to be further out than the center, okay? So I'm just going to give it a light squeeze, touch down. It's basically like um, letting it touch down and then doing a shell, and I'm rotating my flower nail, and I'm trying really hard to get this where you guys can see it. So I basically let it touch down, and then I roll my flower nail even an eighth of an inch so that I have that nice overlap right there. Can you see that? So, so that it's wanted to break. You're, you're wanting that to, to that break is on purpose. The breaks on purpose. So it looks like I have individual petals. Oh, okay. And you see the pressure of the squeezing gives you these cool ruffles with this tip. So each time what I'm doing is I let it touch down beyond where I stop piping. I roll backwards and then I roll forwards. And what I'm doing is I'm leaving that center open because I need a wider petal and I want to do two layers, but my ruffle is only so wide, right? Yeah. So now I'm going to come back and where these petals are touching each other, I'm going to come back a quarter turn so that they're going to end up having a little bit of an, it's going to go over where they were touching the last time. 
So you each pay me if you you didn't cut your piping bag all the way, you know, to expose the slit, you could get a, a narrower slit. You understand? You could, you definitely could. But these are for a top of a cupcake, so I I have to do these this wide. These are for to go on a baby shower order this oh, weekend okay. for monster cupcakes. So these are just my practice ones. Okay. But see, I'm using that little um, royal icing transfer I made. Look how pretty. And within what I like to do, because you know how poppies have the little bits that stick out? Mm -hmm. Rather than hand piping with a one-point tip, all those little pieces, I kind of like to just come back and I'm hand placing some of them just a little further away from the center so that it looks like they're a little more spread out, right? So it's just a little a little something extra to add after you put that transfer in. But if you have those transfers made ahead of time, you literally can just push them down into the icing and look, every detail looks finished on the flower. Beautiful. You see what I mean? So yeah. that's, the, that's the 80 tip. That's um, there. I really like the 70 and the 80 um, bag. Hold on. I did bag the 70 so you could see it in case you want to do a different kind of flower. This one has a more jagged tip at the top can you see that okay and then when you roll it do you see how it's a straight ruffle a straight cut it's a very straight cut here this makes a totally different kind of flower something similar to this in the layering but every one of these tips is very different in what it produces like this one has the rounded i'm trying not to pull anything else into the picture just yet but you see how that has the it's wavy yeah, it's like this, a like a like a scoop. Yeah. Yes. And this tip, let me just show you real quick one other thing. The thing I actually started using this for first um, is it's for ballerina. It's cookies. pretty thick, eh? I'm sorry. The consistency is pretty thick. You need the ruffles to to hold. Yes, and look for a, a little girl's ballerina cookie. Uh, it's toothpaste. It's even a little, um, I have to rebag occasionally so that it's even a little stiffer than toothpaste. But you can see it's got good, easy flow as long as you use it right after you do it. But look at that. So if you do a bunch of these ahead of time as a royal icing transfer, let them dry. They're gorgeous to go back and add on to the cookie. And then it gives you a little bit more control. Yes. And you know you're using a certain cookie, then you can um, get your dimensions right. And you can do what I just did and pull a little icing off, right? Isn't that cool? Perfect. So lots of great uses for that tip. I'm really sorry I forgot to demo it last week, but I did think it was worth going back to we'll it. With you. We did a lot of them, right? Yes, we did a lot last week. <laughs> so now I'm just going to jump on. I have already made... Um, prepped cookies for you guys i already prepped cookies for the stamping so so um she said it's like toothpaste it has to be somewhat thick to hold those ruffles yes definitely you guys um it should be like a matte color to the icing like if you're familiar with doing any kind of painting you know high gloss paint looks very wet but when you go to paint with satin or eggshell or um, matte finish matte finish is going to be the dullest look you really need that dull look. It needs to be holding a stiff peak when you're mixing it. Um, and it, if you run one petal and it starts to melt, just stop and rebag. You'll never get the definition like this unless you take the time to get the icing right. Yeah. Um, also, I usually use parchment paper instead of wax paper. I just prefer it. Um, Jeremy, you know that you missed the um, the chocolate and bug conversation. We have great conversations on Tuesday. Have you ever rewatched any of our feeds, Marlon? My husband is like, what do you all talk about? <laughs> Between the edible grass and the um, alcohol, <laughs> this will be another one. Um, you guys, these are on Amazon, super cheap. This is parchment paper. It's by Zen Zenlology. Zen I don't know. It's that, whatever that is. <laughs> I, I can't do it today. I always say xenology, but there's no extra O in there. <laughs> so it's unbleached parchment squares. Uh, four by four, I take those and I cut them in quarters. So basically that's the size I'm using. I just cut it in quarters and that's what I use on my flower heads. They also make five by five. So if you need to make bigger flowers and you want bigger squares, um, it's a lot cheaper to buy these and cut them yourself than it is to buy the, the 50 piece packs of already cut parchment. So that, that's generally what I do. 
Okay, so I'm going to put a white paper towel down to kind of help with the, the glare here. And I'm so excited to show you this. I've been playing with stamps about two months now. Um, and I really like what you can do on a cookie with them. But I want to show you a couple things first. And Mara, I think you have this, right? Didn't you also? I, I get never opened it, but I bought it. Okay, so here's my feedback on this. Hey, Cameo, I do really like this. However, it is liquid like, hey, Rachel, it is liquid like airbrush liquid. It's that thin. So I had a lot of trouble with it last night when I was initially doing it because prior to that, I had made my own by taking food gel and breaking it down with Everclear or food gel and breaking it down with water. So I wanted to talk to you about that because I don't think every time we do a project, you need to run out and buy a bunch of new things and spend a bunch of money. So I just want to talk through a couple things real quick before we do some stamping, but don't worry because my cookies are already prepped. So we're just going to move right into the stamping and I'm going to show you a couple things I did last night, but this is the food the food gel, or it's not even gel, really, it's ink. It's um, stamp pad edible ink, and it definitely is, you can't hear it, but it's it's water. It's like shaking a bottle of water. So last night, I put some into this little um, disposable paint palette, and this morning when I came in, it had dried. So combining that, <laughs> combining that with a couple more drops straight out of the bottle actually got it to be slightly thicker. And the slightly thicker, when I tested it this morning, I, I felt like that worked better. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So this is the black that we're going to be using, okay? But I wanted to show you something else. I know someone's going to ask, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. These are like little throwaway detail nail brushes that I got off Amazon in a pack of 50. Um, but you see how thin those are? A lot of people like to stamp on cookies and then go back and paint. I don't prefer that because it... it smears the stamp ink unless you're super super careful so when i was playing around with stampings i came up with a different way to do it but we'll we'll go there in just a second also it makes a difference whether you want to break it down with everclear or whether you want to break it down with water and which type of gel you're using so these gels are neon yellow the hobby lobby sunny side up bakery brand can you see this one right here and how I know, let me, let me, on the bottom? can you see how thick it is? Oh my, yeah. Okay, so this brand of gel, this is in Everclear, and so you have this big blob. So if you want to make paint colors and you're going to be using a lot of them, my recommendation is that you make them ahead of time and you want to strain this color into a bottle and have a whole bunch already made up and have it labeled because you get great color from this brand, but obviously you don't want to put any of that, right? You see that? It's like slime. You don't want any of that to end up on your cookie. So that brand with the Everclear, that's what it does. I I like to paint with Everclear um, in my gels because it evaporates faster. So I don't have to worry about my icing getting pitted. So, but this is water. Do you see how nicely it broke down in the water? Yeah. I mean, there's no bits, no pieces. You could use that to airbrush with if you wanted to. All right, so then I decided to show you the one that I most like, and I'm not sure you're going to get a good feel for the color, but I only have two Pro Gels in stock right now. I use um, navy and burgundy from them quite a bit because you get a good deep color really fast. So this is Pro Gel, the burgundy Pro Gel with water added. And look look at that, how, how easily that there's no bits or pieces. I could add some more water to this, put it right in a bottle, and I would be done. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. No bits or pieces, but so you do need to play. I would not say anybody needs to go out and buy a whole new set of colors. Wilton gels act totally different when they're used with water or Everclear. The Americolor acts totally different. The Chef Master acts totally different. You're just going to, there's a certain color you really want. You need to try that color in both things. And I'll also tell you, I've seen several demos online where vodka using vodka even reacts differently. Same gel color done in a tray like this. They did Everclear vodka water. It reacts very different. And the alcohol changes the color of the color oh, interesting. of the gel. So if there's something you really like, you definitely need to invest some time and, and test your colors before you ever start. Don't wait till the last minute on something like this. So 
painting, really great thing. Everybody's really into the watercolors right now, but take the time and do a little testing and play with it. And, you know, honestly, it's a great activity because you can use this to paint on boiled eggs too. If your kids need a project, you can, after you've made this, you don't just have to use it on cookies. Okay. Yeah. It's safe. You can, whatever. Paint Absolutely. So I bought, um, stickers on sale at, you see these? They're not, I'm sorry, not stickers. I bought the stamps that you take off here and you normally put them on a hard pad. Um, yes. I used to use these a lot for craft making. So this is my plug really quickly. Please don't use anything on your food products that you have ever used in crafting on paper products, right? You, If you're going to stamp, you need to buy totally new stamps and they need to be dedicated to the food. You should definitely not think cleaning them is enough and bounce back and forth. That's just not safe. So this is a, a selection of the stamps that I got at Michael's. They were on sale for like $2. I guess they were clearancing them out a few weeks ago. I don't even buy the stamp blocks anymore because cookies can have different, um, they're not always super smooth. I found a couple hacks that work great if you need to do a bunch of cookies really fast, but it doesn't always work. Um, you know, they have bumps or pits or maybe the cookie um, is hunched up in the middle. So I don't ever put these on a stamp pad anymore. I get the ones that I like. I leave them attached to this clear plastic that they're on. And I am not the person that invented this. I've seen five different people do this exact stamp, stamp prepping on YouTube. So I'm just going to show you how to do it, but it is not my technique. I did not develop it. If you try to put, if you wash this, have it ready to go and dry, and then you try to put that stamp ink on here, it does not adhere well to the stamp because that stamp is so glossy. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. The shine? So I buy these Emery boards at the dollar store. They come in a huge pack of them. It's super, super fine, right? An Emery board for your nails. And I rough them up. I'm not digging them or gouging them. I just rough them up so that the ink will have something to stick to, okay? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take long. That's enough. You can see already it's dull, okay? So I've already prepped my flower stamps. I'm just showing you that one because I had not altered anything yet. But today what we're going to do is we're going to stamp with this really pretty tulip. Can you see the oh, tulip? Gorgeous. And we're going to stamp with this mum, this chrysanthemum. All right. So last night when I was playing around, I just grabbed a Valentine cookie that I had iced. And let me just show you some things on this cookie. This is a very ugly cookie. This is not a cookie I'm selling. This was just something I was playing with. It's if a power pipe. Yeah. If you don't have any old cookies laying around that you want to practice with, I would recommend just getting a cheap um, cardboard cake board and doing some icing directly on your cake board, letting it set up overnight. And then you need to play with this to get the feel of it before you start doing it. So you see this one, this, um, this one, this was the very first stamp I did with it. So what I discovered is it's best to put the ink on and then stamp onto a paper towel, then go stamp on the cookie. This is what happens with the ink, especially this very thin ink. If you stamp on the cookie without blotting it first, okay, that's what could happen. This is also what happens when you try to stamp without roughing up the stamp, right? Remember I said it's like slick and it holds too much ink. So roughing, this is the difference in stamping without blotting and not roughing it up. Then I roughed it up and I blotted on a paper towel. And look at that beautiful tulip that I got there. Now, for me, I don't want to go back and paint this because what happens, I did a little demo here for you. You see how smeary that is? Like just it's, it drags the black into the yellow no matter how careful you are. Okay, so I was saying I want to do these spring flowers with my local cookie kit. Let me figure out a way that I can make this gorgeous because that's really a very pretty chrysanthemum. And I got a lot of great detail with that stamp, right? So then I went back and I did a cookie. Just this Again, it's an older cookie. And I'm going to stop right here and give you a tip about the cookies. This is the top of the cookie after it baked. But the cookies always have that little bit of a warp. So what I found for stamping, anytime I'm going to stamp, um, and I take all of this in consideration, it's kind of like 
the thing about founding your packaging first and working backwards when you're going to be making a whole lot of the same cookie. Same thing here. I always try to pull a design that I know that I can flip over because if it has that little hump, then it's still gravity is going to take over when you do the flooding on the cookie and you're still going to get a nice smooth surface, right? So I flip it over. I just did the brush embroidery because I was practicing for something else. But then I went back and because I knew I wanted to have a painted tulip, right? I wanted it to look painted. Instead of doing that, I basically held my stamp over my cookie and placed a couple of things and said, okay, well, I want tulips in those areas and I want them to have the look of that red. So I did my little swirl and my cookie in as a wet on wet technique when I first iced the cookie, knowing I was going to come back and do the stamp. So that's just the single stamp right on top of that cookie this morning when it was dry with the stamping. You can see there's no smearing. There's no color bleed. It's actually I kind of like it. It's kind of artistic looking to me. Um, if I were really doing this on a cookie to sell, I would have just done the one cookie and I would have left room to do the stem because that would have been really pretty. But I wanted to show you this all in the same frame. So the other thing I'm going to show you is this. If you're not comfortable with stamping, watch how easy this is. If you have this tool up here, you can have this next to whatever you're working on. And you actually could sketch this with the food doodler, right? You can come right over your wet and wet technique and I'm doing this really fast. And the icing has to be dry now. She's yep. going to start on her cookie on wet icing. Yeah, this is from last night. But you can come back in here. And with having done that wet on wet technique under it, you could very easily come up with something that's fast for you to do. <clears throat> by just using your pen. Also, if your area gets a little bit too big, you can come back with your pen, <coughs> excuse me, and just take in, take in whatever area if you end up making your flower too big. So there's several ways to get to this point or combining all of these techniques if you want to. Um, and now look, guys, if I was selling this cookie, I would have taken a lot more time to do this. And I probably would have used a combination of a brush tip and this fine point pen, but I'm just showing you real quickly with outlines, okay? But you get the gist of that, right? And I really like the artistic style of it. I know some people will not, I get that, I'm okay with that, but I like the artistic style of how that looks for springtime. I think flowers, you know, just in general are all very different, kind of like snowflakes. So I think you just find something that works for you. I thought this might be a good point to show you, can you see how bubbly this cookie is, the icing on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is an example of what's gonna happen to your cookie if you try to flood and the ice, your flood icing is too, too much water in it and you try to flip it over, right? So this is the top and I left this just like it was so it would run off so I could show you what you don't wanna come into the next day, right? After you flooded all these cookies so it, I can't stress enough that consistency of your icing is super important. So you see this, how bubbly it is? So when you flip the cookie over, typically the bottom of your cookies have little um, pockets of air, you know, right where they bake. They're not totally smooth like the top. Let me pull it up here and see if I can get it to refocus. <clears throat> is that better? So when you ice it upside down and the icing's too wet, this is what happens. You're going to come back to this. And okay, yes, you could make this into a nice artistic style, but this was not the intent of the project. I'm going to stamp on here and show you what happens when you have a cookie that's this rough, okay? Um, and then I have a cookie to show you. This is a flipped upside down cookie. It was iced last night. And that is if you want to do some like black and white line art. Look how nice that stamp does after it's been roughed up and blotted. It really does a nice job. So my thought, Marlon, was for springtime, I was going to offer some cookies where I had my tulips in the background. I'm going to do that wet on wet technique with a little bit of the red and white swirl, do the stamping. Then I was going to come back and pipe a 3D tulip so that I have mixed mixed platform there for depth on the cookie. So I thought that would be really fun. And I'd get to do a little bit of water coloring because I was going to watercolor where the stems were and then go back and outline with the pen. So when I do one of those up, I'll show it to you at another time. 
Um, but first, let's do the tulip first because I can't, I'm really holding off on the one that I want to do the most, which is the chrysanthemum. So let's pull this back into frame. So basically I have this extra little pad, thickened up pad of um, paper towels. It's nothing fancy. Um, and I do not have a stamp pad to put this ink on and then stamp on that because I'm not technically sure that's food safe. I don't know what the situation is there, but I couldn't well, find I can comment on that, Amy. Yeah, please. Uh, the thing that happens with those reloadable stamps Forget about the food safe aspect. They're not really sealed. And so yeah. by the time you get back to it, everything's dried out. Oh, so then you have to reactivate it anyway. Yeah. I'm just not sure about this type of edible ink sitting in that type of stamp pad. I, I, I could I, not find any good, reliable information yeah. to say that was food safe. But, but that's another, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Safety. And then just your product gets wasted basically by being, you know, sitting there and drying out. But keeping this on the, the plastic that it comes on and prepping it, washing it, all of that, obviously you don't want to rough it up and then immediately use it to stamp. It needs to be washed so that it's clean and food safe. But when you come back to this, this is literally, you can see it. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I'll hold it up. Um, I'm blotting a little bit off so it's not like running in the holes of the stamp. Um, I'm sure you probably could sponge this. There's probably a lot of other things you could do, but I found it worked best for me if I did this. So I'm just showing you this. I'm going to flip it over right here and give it a quick blot, right? Just in case there's too much. But then let's take a look at what happens when you do this stamping on a cookie that's not smooth. Yes, this is going to be a little bit better because I'm able to give a little pressure with my hands, right? It's going to be better than if I was on a wooden block and it was rocking. But look, when the cookie is not level, you have so much more trouble getting full coverage. So yep. the icing in this is not only is it very important that you do a good job on the icing so that it's level, um, but you see what happens? You see how it's pulling in certain areas because it's running to the lower area? Would you say if you're opting for this technique to have more extra cookies in, in case of fails? You know, if you practice ahead of time, you probably need two practice cookies sitting to the side and you need to have developed the design of your cookie to include something like this because that's not actually ruined. You can come right back to this with a food doodler and if there's an area that you just, it just really didn't fill in the way you want, Look mm. how easy it is to go back, mm -hmm. right? So you need to be planning your ink color to have a backup pin color and to have your color as the under part of your tulip, not as going back to paint it later. If you're going to do a whole bunch. Now, if you just want to do a super artsy cookie, you guys, you'll knock it out of the park. Take your time. Um, but I do want to show you this, okay, because I'm a little excited about this. I'm going to I'm going to show you the chrysanthemum on this cookie first as the blotter. And then we're going to go to something else that I did ahead of time. So I'm going to show you what I made ahead of time. So I held my chrysanthemum. Can you see the wet on wet that I did with this? Mm -hmm. So I held the chrysanthemum roughly over the cookie to see where it would be. And then I came back and I added my yellow icing, which is a beautiful like mum yellow. And then I went back and I did the wet on wet technique by pulling the white into the yellow, a little bit of swirling here, and then the yellow up into the white to get those really fine points like you actually have on a chrysanthemum. Mm -hmm. And I am um, I did not do it on two cookies, though. I only did this one. So I waited to show you this today. And I'm going to show you how we're going to add some extra petals once this is on. Once we do the stamp on here, we're going to come back and do just a little bit of drawing with this one. But this is just a cute little purse, so it look, it'll look like a printed pattern on there. Um, I'll be going back and piping some greenery here, so it looks like something's in the like a shopping bag. And probably I should have piped this in brown, but I was just prepping cookies to show you this part of the technique. So lots of things that you could do here. But this is a big stamp, so we have to take that into consideration. And we're going to want to blot that ink. And then what I'm doing is I'm basically putting my brush sideways, right? I'm not up and down jamming color in there. 
This yeah, stamp is going to touch, touch the yeah, elevator. I'm just part. basically going across the top. And frankly, what I found was if you're doing it right, you end up with these little splatter marks on the side because you're putting friction against all these little pieces. So if you've got it fully covered, you'll end up with that because that little bit of pressure you're putting is going to give you some splatter. Mm -hmm. You know, and these are great, too. This is a great way to do wording on cookies as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of stamps of uh, letters and all that. So let's see this one really quick on here. I'm just flipping it over. The key thing is you don't want to move it. I would not use the stamping blocks for all the reasons we just talked about. And pick it straight up. Now, you see how much extra ink? Mm -hmm. No problem for what we're about to do if this happens to you. It doesn't look bad. But if you want to go back and paint that, you're going to have a huge mess, okay? But if you want to do what we're doing, we're going to come back right here. I'm finding the rough point. I want to be slightly below those edges that I made. And I'm going to drop it down on the cookie. I just want to give it a once over. I try to keep one finger on it to hold it and the other one to smooth. And I try to grab it at the edges and pick straight up. So you see what, what we've got here with our printing? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's over the yellow. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to come back. And while the food coloring is still wet, we're going to go ahead and add in some additional um, drawing with the pen. And when this is done, you won't even know what's pen and what's stamp. You, you can't really tell when it's totally dry. I mean, I guess if you get up close on it, you can. But they're both edible ink. So on the ones that I've done so far, you can't really tell. And then like this area where there's a lot, I'm just using my pen to kind of pull it around. And I'm going to tighten up on some of these bits and pull them forward. So if you plan for this in your design and this is the look that you want, it, you can do better stamping because it's not really going to matter if you get that perfect outline. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, it's part of the kind of you're going for that style. Yeah, so if you're concerned about it, then plan a cookie where you can do this. And, of course, my food doodler is going to go out on me. Do I have another one? I'll use my Wilton. It's probably a little – oh, actually, I got a Chef Master. This is my favorite one to use, this um, with the brush end. I like to have some wider areas and then come back and come back with the tip and finish in these areas. Now, really yesterday when I practiced with this one, I was able to get a little closer. Um, and I thought this might happen on this cookie because this cookie in particular has a little bubble in it and it's probably a year old at this point. The other pen that works great on these, if you wanna combine pens, um, this tweets marker, but then we're gonna all wind up back in that same discussion about the fact that it's non-toxic, it's not food safe. So you really have to decide ahead of time what you want to draw and paint with, okay? But for no more than what you're doing on a cookie like this, you see these little swirls up in here? So I'm just basically using that yellow as my undercolor and adding another layer to my stamp. So if, you, if your stamp's a little small and you do your under part a little too wide, you're still good to go. You see? Very nice. All right. Now, probably um, if you really wanted to get into this, I would come down in here. It just depends on how artsy you want to be with this stuff. I'd come down in here and I would personally take in this little bit of extra yellow that's here. Just make it part of the flower. Yeah, to use the. Mm -hmm, so that you're using that color fully. And then I would come back and at this point I'd pipe a three dimensional stem on here just because I like to add. I would do this in with green right? To bring it down. And then I'd probably come back and pipe just a little bit of green. You see where I'm drawing this part? I'd pipe just a little bit of 3D green over that to make it look like it's cupping the flower. But I think any of these, if you plan them, they're great for spring. You can make it really fast, but you can see what happens with this. Isn't that pretty? Very nice. So there's a lot of things out there right now, too. I, I did flowers because you guys know I really like flowers. But there's a lot of stuff out there. There's happy birthday. There's oh, um, there, these, stamping is is a craft just like, pe like people are yeah. as pleased about uh, stamping as we are at cookies. And yeah. a huge inventory of these. Huge. Things. Look, and look, let me just show you a couple more that were in the, the $2 section. Look at these beautiful fairy stamps. Can you see those? Yes. 
All right. And then we have these butterflies. So this would be great to do like the wet on wet technique underneath knowing roughly and then doing your stamp on top of your butterfly if you wanted to. Um, Marlon, you have a video out that's awesome where you're making the flower, I think, with doing the wet on wet and you're pulling back in, pulling color back into the other color. Well, here, if, if two seconds, I'll play a video just to add to the conversation. Now, I'm going to play this video off of my YouTube channel. So I'm going to share my screen and we're not going to be able to talk, but the video is literally one minute. OK, so I'm just okay. going to play it. That sounds awesome. So there's a lot of stuff on the screen here. I don't know if it's going to let, oh, application window. I'm, and I'm going to switch there. cameras while you're doing right. that. Okay. Well, then this here, is it going to show the whole one here? I'm going to play the, the. So can you hear me? I can. So you see the, the shirt there? I actually stamped on a piece of paper and then cut it out with my X-Acto and airbrushed the little shirt so that I wouldn't disrupt the stamped lines. Do you see? Right. Did you do that with wafer paper? No, I stamped on the cookie. Oh, okay. Then I created a shield on paper and then okay. I... So then you're exactly recreating your stamp without all the like right you, the airbrush you're not touching those black lines absolutely so it's just another way to oh, utilize yes. the technique he demonstrated but then you're not oh, yeah let go on the cookies <laughs> well let me close it he's talking <laughs> so there's lots once you start playing with them there are so many things that you can do with the stamps and you don't need a lot you definitely don't need to stamp the whole cookie this is just a nice little accent on a cookie. Uh, let me hold it this way. So just doing just that tulip that I showed you at the beginning, off in the corner, if you have a different scene on your cookie, that's it. Less is more sometimes, right? Well, I'm saying, see, if you stamp on paper your, stamp, your, your tulip, then you can cut it out and then you can quickly airbrush yes. your tulip. And then yes. you put exactly the pigment right <laughs> on your tulip. So, so we just brought the airbrush back in for those of you that don't have well, one. Well, I'm using the airbrush. That's why it's on my yeah, uh, brain. Please visit Marlin's channel. She has a couple on there. I have the cordless black one that she recommends, and I love it. So you should invest that $50 or $60 soon. So today, <laughs> thank you, Amy. So if you miss any part of Amy's, like, I mean, I want to say it's, saving you on experimenting yourself like yes. great information and the tutorial it's more than a tutorial so so for that and then um i'm just going to do a quick plug here if you guys are interested i have some easter bundles that were created on global belly for uh, everything like in one click so you get all the supplies cookie mix royal icing mix shipped to your to your door and you can with the tutorial you could do the coloring page cookies or the little three Easter critters. Oh, that's so good. I love that you guys are doing all those bundles. I think that's very enticing to people that are just coming in. To yeah, well, people who don't know what they need. And then this is my mm -hmm. shop here where I list everything, all my favorite stuff. So that's on Facebook. Today I'm actually using, I have a, an assortment of airbrushes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I have the, the black with the second one over and I have that pink one. Well, the reason I have this many airbrushes is because every time you use a different color, you'd have to wash out your airbrush. So I don't wash out my airbrushes. I put one as green, one as red, or whatever the colors I'm using, and then I don't have to constantly be washing them out. So that's the kind of why I do that. Oh, can I tell them something before we move on? Because I'm afraid yes. I'll forget. If you guys are not busy this Saturday night at 7 o'clock, I would love for you to come watch my tutorial in Spring Cookie-a-thon. It's going to be on um, my page, Come to Seriously Sweet on Davis Street. 
and um, on my Facebook page, it, I and it's 25 minutes. So come on right at seven. I start at 7.02. Um, that's day? Eastern Standard Time this Saturday night. Saturday night. And so. I am the, I think I'm the last person going before it closes. Nancy Westfall will close it out. She'll take that last half an hour and talk about the next day. So I think I'm the closer. I don't know if that's good or bad or on purpose or not, but that's my spot. I hope that you will grab your dinner and come sit in front of the TV and um, leave me some great comments. Okay. So just come to my Facebook page that night. So uh, <laughs> what, what did Dick Cameo say? I'm right there with the multiple airbrushes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the thing is, is I hated that I knew I was going to need a color in the next kind of step, but then I needed another. So then you're basically constantly putting your, your food color in the sink. Well, yeah, oh. you're wasting the color. Plus the battery on these cordless ones goes faster, right? Exactly. So you don't want to be blowing out all of that um, product. Exactly. So today I thought I'd revisit this design. Over I the love years, that one. I've made many cookies, thousands, I would probably <laughs> say. And, and so some are more popular than others. And this one was a hit. So I thought I'd revisit this today, but giving it a different spin. So let's now, do Is that. Jeremy here? Did Jeremy point out that's on the candy corn yet? Oh, I, I don't know if he... Uh, he <laughs> Did he notice yet? <laughs> so the candy corn, if you follow me, um, is one of my favorite shapes because of its versatility. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things out there to buy at some point. You know, it's nice to reuse the stuff that we kind of have. And so the candy corn is one of these shapes that's, that's um, interesting for that. And then I designed the mushroom to kind of fit on there. You know, a mushroom, if you Google them, they come in all shapes and sizes. So there's really no kind of wrong way to do it. So this one here is an airbrushed version of the design. Love it. You put all the templates up today in the cookie school, right? Yeah. So I have a cookie school group where I add like all the backup stuff to this, um, to the, to, to the live streams that I do. Um, I'm a little maybe obsessed. I've I've um, been cheating on my candy corn cutter. I've been moving on to other things, but yes, it was a favorite for a long time. You have used the egg a few times recently for non-egg things. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I make all my own stencils. I get comments often, where do I get them? Well, I make them myself. I have a silhouette. A silhouette is a machine that cuts the whatever you design. It basically sends information to the machine that cuts just like a printer prints a picture. So it's basically that. And so when you airbrush, airbrush comes out, if you've ever sprayed anything, it's hard right. to control, right? It's gonna go where it's gonna go. So I like to create shields. And so you can see here there's holes. So it basically you're protecting the area that you do not want color on and, and you're leaving areas open to where you do want. Now you can cut for each color here, instead, I'm just using a post-it to, to block the hole. Now, I... Marlon, did you put a post up for the cookie school? Is it at the top of this feed when it's over? Um, yeah, it's automatically uh, a post okay. at the top of the feed. So just follow that feed, but don't leave the tutorial to do that. Do that after we get done. <laughs> so I cut my stencils in two kind of uh, materials. Either I cut it out of stencil plastic, mm -hmm. and that's in the shop. You can find the, mm -hmm. my plastic and then I'll cut out a cardstock. And when I cut out a cardstock like I'm doing here, I'll usually cut it about the size of the cookie so that I can align it more easily because it's very difficult to position something when you can't see through it. So, so you guys I you guys see how she has that cut with the opening? That's actually more of a stencil, but she, you will find a lot of projects in her cookie school where she does stenciling and shielding. So she'll use the bits that she cut out to cover an area right there. Exactly. And so that's kind of the easiest way to replicate design. I see a lot of people painting on cookies mm -hmm. and painting is a skill. I guess you can learn, but artistic ability is something, um, you know, there's different, like there's different kinds of, of artistic ability. Some people are really good at conjuring mm -hmm. up things in their head and sometimes somehow they can pop it out their hand and there's the drawing. Others are really good at copying other people's work. But if you're not really good at drawing, doesn't mean you can't participate in artistic things and be artistic. It's just right. a different, different way to do it. And stencils are a great way to have a way to kind of control uh, 
first of all, you're going to replicate really easily the same thing multiple times. And you can kind of control the situation. I think people that aren't naturally, you know, good at right. drawing. There's a know. different way to get there. You just have to yeah. get a style. And so um, these they're asking what kind of paper you used for that. And was that actually cut on the silhouette? It was cut on the silhouette. And this is um, like a hundred pound card stock. Okay. And I don't like to use paper. It's, it's a little flimsy, especially with little bits like this. So you want to use a little bit <laughs> of, um, you know, it needs a bit of st sturdiness. And I mean, can I answer Nana Sue really quick? You answer, yes, absolutely. Um, that that number eighty tip. I think I told you guys last week. I have no idea where I got it from. It's I, it came in a pack of those little tips. It probably came off Wish or AliExpress, if I had to guess. And there was five in it. They all had slits on the side, um, and it was like a sixty, a seventy, an eighty, and two other numbers. And I don't know the two other numbers because I never use those. So I would check Wish or Amazon. And what would you call that, Marlon, that tip with the slit? Is that like a ruffle tip? Is They're called ruffle tips. Okay. I uh, actually did a video for those, a sponsored video, and the person was selling them on uh, Amazon. Okay. So I would search ruffle tip for cake decorating or cookie decorating. Are we good? Yep. I think we're good. I think I caught everybody's questions. If I didn't post your question again, it means I've missed it. Um, what's bright ice and can I use a uh, food color? Well, the thing that happens, you can do that. The thing is, is if you're going to airbrush regularly, it's just so much mm -hmm. easier to have the airbrush colors. They come you, like AmeriColor sells exactly the same collection in airbrush and in gel. And then you don't have to do all that fiddling. You can right. just squirt a, a drop into your airbrush gun. So personally, I don't feel that it's worth it. But if you want to go that route, it, you just have to really be sure that there's none of that kind of gelatiny stuff because it's right. going to clog up. Have to strain, right? Oh. And then the other thing is what you just mentioned is that they have the same gel color and airbrush color. So you're able to do a cool tone on tone once you start airbrushing, which exactly. looks beautiful. So you exactly. can get even more dimension. Exactly. So when you're airbrushing, it's wind a little bit. And so if you just have a little paper like this, it's going to fly away. So I like to weight them down. Here it's sticking to my needle. <laughs> I like to weight them down so that they don't fly away. Right. And now I'm protecting my area because I'm adding my sky, okay? So you can use blue, but if you're going for something that looks a little bit more natural, yes, when we were kids at school, the sky was, you know, bright blue, but in reality, it isn't so, so blue, right? Right want to look at especially I have like the 50 pack of AmeriColor but when we talk about like mixing colors it's a lot easier if you're mixing your icing airbrush colors tricky to mix right, right. and, and the other is, thing is having those colors already mixed you can duplicate a cookie later whereas you may not be able to get back to the same shade if you start all of the mixing on your own um exactly. Tracy her airbrushes I believe are all listed on her on Marlin's Amazon store I think okay. there's links to a lot of them, but didn't a, several of them come from AliExpress? Oh yeah, I got a whole bunch of them from AliExpress. So now I'm just going to quickly airbrush basically the sky onto the, the cookie. So I'm shielding my critter and my mushroom and I'm just doing a light. And, and I've said this before, you don't have to screen colors at people. You right. can just do light. You know, you don't have to put a whole bunch of color all the time. There's so the now, link. There's the link for you, Jeremy. Drop the link in, and then Marlon. They're asking um, about first-time airbrush users. Do you have a recommendation on what's easiest to get started? I mean, the thing is, this is a this is a fifty-dollar airbrush gun. This is this is a entry level. This here. I mean, yeah. you're you know, this is not big money to invest. The one that's plugged is is. Um, also about $50. I really like the wireless one because depending on your work area, sometimes you don't have a plug right there, you know? And and if you have a ton of stuff on your dat on your table, it, you know, the wire can get in the way. Right. This like you're literally that's it. There's nothing kind of in your way to work. I I think for the money the the wireless are good. Yeah, and I like that one because it's not that double pull action thing and it yeah, came with yeah. like yeah, it what a double lever is that what you called it 
It's dual action, they call yes. it. Yes. And this one, one of the ones like she's showing you is much easier. And then someone's also asking you if you can talk to them about um, using the spray cans of paint from Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Those, the thing about those, they're fine. They're really, they're fine. It's just, you cannot really control. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of shield and, and, the sh and the thing needs to be really secured because the wind that comes out of those cans is quite strong. So your stencil is going to blow away. And it's just harder to control. But if you're just doing like a kind of like not really intricate thing, they're right. fine. Like for doing the grass, it would probably be fine, right? Like for Easter cookies. And they're great for, let's say you had like a tray full of you wanted to make gold or a tray full you wanted to make pearl. It's great. That's right. a great for that. And Brianna, the gray, I, I don't, I'm not aware of a gray marker. Maybe Marlon is. But yes, I have it here, Brianna. So this is the collection. They're okay. like, I, it's hard for see the grays right there black brown this if is you, all these colors if you can't find that gray or you don't want to buy that big of a set i have actually used the dull silver pens to touch up gray before you know not the metallic ones but a dull one okay i think i think we're caught up that's it so when you're airbrushing some colors do not layer well uh, airbrush colors are basically translucent so if I had uh, airbrushed now, like the blue, well, I, it would not be ideal to come over that with, let's say, yellow. That would not work. Okay. But green does work. So I'm going to, now I'm leaving the bunny, and now I'm putting my grass, and I'm weighting that down once again. And you want to kind of make sure you don't move that critter back there. And now I'm going to put green in my next airbrush gun. Which what one? was that pen set, Marlon? The name it's, of the um, it's uh it's called food drip or something food they're called food color classics on food the market. color classics i put i put uh, the smaller version they they have all kinds this company they're from argentina oh, and they have, they have actually a food safe really thin marker a point zero zero three. Oh wow that's nice that's the size of the tweets point that's the, that one's at that one's FDA approved though, right? Yeah, this one's food safe. Yes. So now I've got my shield on and I'm doing grass and I'm hitting this way so that I don't get the underspray. So I'm hitting down from here. Nice. To get my my green on. At That's the a great tip. Green. And the the green, I guess forgiving on top of the blue because when you make, see now I'm taking off everything and everything is like nice and white mm -hmm. under there. So Perfect. let's take another one. And you can run through your steps. It's easier to do, like if you're doing a tray of cookies, all the same, you know, do your steps. And then if you don't have multiple airbrushes like this, it's not a big deal. Right. You know? If you do all 24 the same, exactly. and then, then circle back. You're not wasting so much. Exactly. So now let me just do a quick the blue on this. What blue is that? Did you say already? Oh, no, I forgot to say. This is Wedgwood. I love Wedgwood. Me too. It's my favorite color to put behind if I'm painting yeah. silver. It makes a perfect sky, and it's really great if you're going to be doing clouds. Now, airbrush dries pretty quick, but you want to sometimes just give it like a little second, especially if you're going to be resting another thing on top of it. Okay. And now I'm going to add my green elements. And you guys, you realized what she said a second ago, that she's spraying downward, like away from where the cuts are, so it won't shoot up underneath the paper. Because it is, it's like it becomes like airborne, the color, right? Mm -hmm. so wherever it wants kind of thing. Right. Um, do you, would you put a link in later for them for the pens, Marlon? Will you be able to sure. do that? Sure, sure. So okay. now this is optional, okay? But this is the things you can do with airbrush. This is the point of this today's session. So now I'm grabbing brown and you can kind of create a shadow. I'm just putting warm brown in my airbrush gun. Oh my gosh, my needle was... My needle was pulled back. That's, what happened there. That's why you always test off the cookie, guys, right there. <laughs> and I'm seeing it's sometimes, yeah, this one's not going to work right now. Um, um, she, she's going to drop a link in for you, Bright Eyes, okay? 
Um, and someone wants to know if you prefer Chef Master for airbrush paints. Do you have a particular airbrush brand you like? I think well, I mean, Chef Master is very, very good. But I, most of my collection when I built it was with Americolor. But Chef Master is very good. Right. But because, you know, that's kind of the, the thing. Yes, so Sean, I love the Wedgwood. So now you can take the brown, okay? And the closer you are, so airbrush, it comes out of a, a needle hole. So when it comes out, it's it, like coming out basically like it forms a triangle. So right. the closer you are, the smaller the line, the further out you go, the wider it's going to spray. So now I'm hitting on the cardstock and I'm hitting right, you can see it. And then I'm going to go right off of it. And I want to create a bit of a shadow on the side there of my, of my thing. And I'm creating the shadow on the same side. I'm a bit like in a weird position here, but Jeremy wants you to create um, a wizard on a unicorn fighting a dragon with this airbrush set. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we know you can do it. <laughs> so I'm hitting on the cardstock, not so much on the cookie. And mm -hmm. so the air kind of blows off and then you get like a bit of a shadow happening off the edge. You see? It's a whole nother level of dimension right there. Just that little spritzing. Exactly. And so now I, the bunny, this is another thing I want to look at. So if we look at the picture of the bunny here, if we look at his, there's two feet, there's two paws. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one that's leaning on the mushroom, that's the base icing of the cookie. So that's how you can kind of use the shielding to your advantage. You see that's right that's in the ear too. Yes. So it's just to create the depth of the design. You don't have like the background is that layer. The second layer is his body. And then the third layer is that second arm on right. top and the leg on the front. So it's just to create levels of, of dimension on the character. So here I'm going to do that. I'm adding my shield and I'm going to add those two um, kind of paws in the brown. I'm did you talking. cut all these um, with an X-Acto knife or you did them on the silhouette? These well, I did the silhouette. Okay. And then someone is asking if you ever worry about the mist going everywhere when you airbrush. Um, I, I don't. I used to. But now, I mean, this is my work area. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, I, the, I don't find that these airbrushes cause a lot of mess. When I clean up, I don't have a lot of, like, smear. You know, you see right. it. You wipe your counter. It's not so bad. So now I'm going to use the brown here let's use the brown to do so i'm going to grab a post-it and just shield my red area here june are you going to a party is that what the evening gown is for <laughs> so here is the little um one of the two mushroom sections and so you can just do a, a like a light pass can you hold the the airbrush up and just show them how little color you actually have in there we're, oh, we're, we're just spraying. Do you see? There's so little in there, you guys. Because you, it's really tough to put it back in the bottle. So if you have a ton in there, you're just going to waste it, chances are. You're better to pour it again after, put more in. So right. now I'm just darkening the side here, you see, to get like a bit of shading. Yes, that looks great. And now I'm seeing I wasn't quite at the right spot. So I'm just going to nudge it over and do it again. It's not a big deal. So usually you guys, two, three drops of color right down in the very bottom part of the well is all you need to do. It's better to keep refilling. So I find like, again, back to the painting, I personally find the painting difficult. I have trouble with oversaturation. I add too much moisture. I can't control where the heck the color is going. It seems to seep everywhere. Right. Whereas the airbrush, it doesn't do that. I get a really even coverage. Like I don't get paintbrush strokes. Right. It doesn't look so messy. So, I mean, if you have good experience with the airbrush, great. I, I'm not so much. Well, between that, a wet on wet technique combined with some airbrushing and then using that background as another level of the dimension of your cookie, you can get a lot of detail in a cookie quick. Exactly. Is my color going to come out? I can't tell, but I sure do like that Wedgwood blue. 
And guys, this is a great time for you to practice because Easter cookies, especially if you want to just practice this, Easter eggs are a fantastic cookie to try this on because it's very forgiving in the design. It's like Halloween cookies. You you really you can get away with a lot at Halloween if you're not good at it oh, yet. My, my um oh, what happened? Well, the vibration, you know, there's like that little thing that covers the needle. Yes. Like, and screwed after, you know, like time. We should mark this one for the blooper reel where the, the day the tools fell apart. <laughs> the <laughs> we'll vibration. Tell him. <laughs> so so you can play with coverage, you know, you don't have to do like full coverage. So you can do darker around the edge and leave a bit, you know, so that it looks a bit more rounded. Right. And, you know, take the minute to look at stuff online and say, oh, you know, like it should have a little bit darker there or whatever. Look, Bright Eyes is going to try this. She's excited to try this. So you did your job today, Marlon. I did my job. So now yes. it's just going to protect. We have another airbrush sister here. <laughs> So now I'm just adding this mushroom here. And I can see my my airbrush is splattering. I have to clean the gun, I think, because it actually looks really good though, because it's a mushroom top. Yeah, it's working. All right, so there. And now I'm gonna grab the brown to do the other bigger area of the so this mushroom. Love it. So I'm gonna shield this here. And it was wet. I could feel it sticking to it. Okay. So she's using a combination of stenciling and shielding while she's airbrushing. And again, just to pass light to get the coverage. And then you can come in and do darker on the edge. And you guys, if you're going to make these, you should um, save them right? You don't want to necessarily have to cut them every single time. So get yourself a cookie bag. A cookie bag is a great way to store these, to keep all your pieces together once they're dry. And then just... And also, this is a great way to do corporate orders with the mm -hmm. stencils because often logos have multiple colors. You want to yeah. have everything repeat really well. I mean, and you can charge actually for preparing the thing. Look, another person who's had an airbrush for, bought it last year, hasn't used it. You've renewed their interest. They're going to start again. So I was not paying attention. So this shadow is on the wrong side. It should be on this side. <laughs> but you're getting the point. I, I, I covered it. I didn't see what side it was on. Okay. If so you hadn't told us, we wouldn't have noticed. There you go. So now you can combine your airbrushing with marker. Again, I struggle myself with, with painting. So you can come in now and add some extra, like, you know, little, yes. little pieces of grass. That's so funny. We didn't even talk and look at how many of the overlap things we've done today. That's great. Yeah. That's fun. And there, so you can kind of do that. And then I'm going to grab that marker that I mentioned. So this marker here, and then you can come in and just trace. You know, you can pipe if you want. But and look how steady your hand is. My hand was not that steady earlier when I was trying to sketch. Well, you can practice on paper. And then once you start a line, try to commit. Yes. I and think definitely I shouldn't have had so much tea this morning. You shouldn't have had tea, yes. Yeah, I should have skipped that and waited till after our video today. Um, let's see. The cookie dries fast. Can you use all stencils? No problems. Yes. Airbrush coloring dries super fast, like a little, a little waving over it and it's going to be dry. Yes. Um, and yes, bright eyes, you totally should try painting because again, like she was explaining, you don't, you can come at it from a different direction and get a super artistic cookie. So please don't give up. Try some and post them. So there, and then if you want, the other thing that you can add to this, which is really, yeah. uh, you know, if you want to talk mixed media. So this is wafer paper. Love it. And I airbrushed it and it curled terribly, but it doesn't really matter when you're using it for like making little, little things like this. So I've got a little punch. They sell them. They're tiny. I'm, I'm so excited you're using wafer paper in a punch. <laughs> so I'm, it's dried out and I can hear how crunchy it is. So I'm just going to cut four. <laughs> And you um, want to do a color that's going to contrast well with the other, does like the rest of your design. Which of that little, what was the name of that marker? Was that a tweets marker? No, this marker is that um, color. That what it's called. But I actually added it to the shop, my Facebook shop. I did add it today. Okay. It says right on it, 100% edible. Okay, good. So go, go find that one. 
Debbie, that's the one that you need. Okay. And it's totally edible. So now I've got my little yellow flowers there. So Look, I'm Jack, just... Jacqueline's. What is she going to try airbrushing too? We want to see your cookies after you make them. So I'm just adding a little, I mean, you don't need a lot of, of uh, royal icing to secure a wafer paper uh, flour. They glue at nothing. And when you bite into them, they melt in your mouth. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, having this crunchy thing, if that's a control, like a, a thing that bothers you, you know. And then in the middle of the flowers, you can add a little dot of another color. And this is where I would insert candy. <laughs> you could add little little Easter egg uh, design oh. or whatever you want to add to something. You know what I mean? It looks like yes. cool. so. Here, your ass looks beautiful, Marlon. Doing the, that little bit darker over the uh, with the marker over the airbrushing. That looks awesome. Well, it adds to it, right? So here's mm -hmm. the other version of it. So you're you're just basically filling in. So once you've got that silhouette let's say we airbrush. Well, the reason you would do that if you were doing like even if a plate design, well, you're getting your guidelines at that point. Yes. Instead of just airbrushing that whole thing blue to get your background, right. well, you're getting guidelines instantaneously by doing it that way. Now, if you don't have, beautiful. If you don't have the, the silhouette, like you, if you know I want to do this this weekend, well, every night you cut a little bit of your stencil. Right. By the end of the week, you'll have it all done and you can easily... I mean, it's worth that time that it takes to kind of make your shield yes. stencil. And you know, it's really nice too, if you guys haven't discovered this yet, if you need to hand cut stencils just to get started for a project like this, those little tiny curved manicure scissors are fantastic for cutting these. Oh yeah. I've yeah, they're, they're easy. They're easy to hold on to. They're easy to get in there. Keep your corners <laughs> rounded. So if you don't want to do the exacto knife, pick up a pair of those little manicure scissors. And again, don't cross them over. Don't use them for what they're really for and then come use them for food. Dedicate them to your toolkit for cookies. So now I'm just adding to the wet red ice thing um, a Love little it. drop of white to give it that cute kind of like, you know, the real like toadstool stool look. And now yes. Taupe icing for the stem. I Love like it. I like the taupe. It's kind of like a combo brownish. Where where is the taupe from? What company was that? Because you used that last week too, I think. Yeah, that's a Maricolor. Maricolor taupe. Love that. And if you want, you can bring in some sanding sugar or something to make like a little bit of the dirt at the bottom, or you could do it in green, the sanding sugar. It's nice to have like different textures and you know what else works great. Um, do you know in the grocery store how they sell those pre-made like cookie um, pie shells, like the Oreo one, and they have a yeah, shell yeah. one. It, get one of those and bust it down. It goes a little, you know, that shell goes a very long way, but it's so fine already. You don't have to even break out another machine to grind anything up to make you dirt. Use that for the dirt. Mm -hmm. That's so pretty. So there, and then for the bunny, you can type the bunny if you want. Now, I don't have them out, but I would use a non pare, a black, like you did for your poppy. Mm -hmm. to the, um, for the eyeball? eyeball. Uh, yeah, I would not pipe a black, you know, it's just not worth it. But you can quickly add your bunny. Just so like cute. Out, because you have the silhouette there. Right. You know exactly like how to draw him. So now you guys realize how people can get these super detailed shapes without um, without having to go back and literally recreate each cookie. If you've got to do 24 of these really quick, this is the way to go to, to stencil on your outline. And then look, look, this is so fast, but this cookie looks like it took a ton of time. I so mean, it's not. All, the template's all in the cookie school group. I added it this morning. Oh, I'm going to plug her cookie school group. I'm a cookie school group member. I love it. It's like $5 a month. It's fantastic. There's a huge, huge library in there of material. Um, and she's got everything in there, you guys, from doing stencils to airbrushing to designs. That's gorgeous. And look at how very different they look. Yeah, there's the two. And if you want it, once it's dry, this one here, I did it not long ago, but you could come in and, and do those black lines a bit. Right. You, know, like you still could. Like storybook looking, right? It's so yeah. pretty. Like you you could do that. Here's 
Here's another one that I just edited this morning. I'm going to upload it soon, but you see, this is all basically the same. It's just airbrushing, shielding, the yes. marker for the detail. For are, the you, are you going to do that on here soon? That might possibly be my favorite bunny ever. That bunny is so cute. Well, the tutorials for the cookie school group. So that's where you're going to be able to. All right. Out. Well, you guys see, look, another reason. And it's only $5. You're even if you don't want to do anything oh. in the cookie school, you should do the cookie school so that you're supporting Marlon's videos because she works hard on all of these. So there's 20. I, I haven't read 20. Are you keeping up with them? Um, um, yes, I think we're on with I did posted everything down to I'm obsessed with the black lines with June. That I'm going to post that one so it'll be in the video. And then I need to join today. You should join today. And please come watch me on Cookie Athon. I don't want to be there alone. Oh, no. We'll, we'll go are, are you going to be there, Mar? I'm going to need to know you're there. Yes, well. <laughs> Set that alarm. Oh, At least come say hello. There, but not actually there. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's all virtual. I yes, can't wait for that bunny. Anne Marie's in the group. She did her first cookies, uh, I think, last week. She did. Yeah, I saw her post. You're doing great. All right, I'm giving the control back to you. So that I think we're done for today. That was a lot of information, a lot of great like techniques for um, for all of you that want to kind of experiment with different stuff. Yeah, and yeah. good time to work in for Easter, right? I think that that I'm glad you're putting that up there. I don't so, have that pack of markers. You really like those? I do. So, so this here, this marker and this, it's all the same brand. Okay. And they have the other, it comes in this. So these are like more of a paintbrush. I have to say these, as much as I do like them, I find, I find them quite pricey. These are like $50. This Is that the food drink? Set. What's that yeah. brand? It's all the same brand. Okay. So, so, so these are, it's called drip color here. It's printed okay. on the side. You get the markers in this thing. So it's called drip color. So all of these are the same company. And I have to say, I do like them, but this particular one's a bit pricey. This, this one is about $2 a marker, which I find is not too bad. And these, th this comes not individually. You have to buy like six. So it's blue, red, green, black, brown. Right. Mm-hmm. I They're, like that you have such a huge variation, especially greens and browns are super handy to have multiple shades of. Well, I've never seen a set like this. This is great. Is it available U.S. and Canada, do you think? They're from Argentina. Okay. So they're for sure in the States you can okay. get. Okay. Okay. I added a link in my, I don't know if it got approved because Facebook has to approve what I post. Right. But I did put it in my shop, my Facebook shop, so you okay. can it there. But I mean, it's just the variety of color. I especially love the gray and this brown because mm -hmm. everything is so harsh in the markers. Yeah, I've never seen a gray marker until that set. So I'll definitely have to be picking that up. Yes, drip color. So if you look drip color gourmet, gourmet <laughs> markers. I don't know who's sucking on the markers, but they're gourmet. <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> But oh. I do like them a lot. And the marker, I had never seen a super fine brown marker. Hi, Mabel. And that's actually what I use for these guys instead of the black. Oh. And it just looks nicer, you know, like it gives it more that woodsy kind of artsy feel than having a super harsh black line. You know, I don't what I mean? know what this bunny reminds me of from childhood, but I must have had a bunny that looked like this because as soon as I saw you post that, I was like, I'm making that one. I love it. I love it. So pretty. Well, I'm glad you like it. It's on the simple um, Wilton comfort grip that everybody has. You know, that bunny cutter that's like the classic. Yes. Kind of, I, I fit them on there. So, But I love how you did it where it doesn't look like it just has the piped edge and the pink in the center. That that bunny's gorgeous. Well, it's a bit different. It looks more um, like, a, like a character you'd see in a book, right? Right, like right. Maybe that's what it is. There must be some storybook with a bunny that looked like that as a kid that I like. Well, that's it, Amy. That was fun. We got a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of info today. Yes, we sure did. I hope it inspires somebody to pick up something, just one of the techniques and try it and then post some pictures so we know what you're doing. We love to see your pictures. Exactly. Oh, she's saying that he looks like the bunny from Watership Down. I haven't seen the art on 
to look it up, but I tried to, I did look at different things, but I, I drew them myself. So I better Google that. I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a <laughs> book that uh, the kids usually get assigned to read at school. Oh, okay. Well, thanks everybody Yay. for joining us. So well, you'll be on Friday, right? With, with Han and Amber. I'll be on Friday live at one o'clock again. And so here's the cookie school group here. So you can join on Patreon, Montreal Confections. I have it also on Facebook, but um, for me, it's better if you join on Patreon. So if you don't, if it doesn't bother you, which, whichever. The, there, and there's a bigger library on Patreon because it's existed for longer, so. I don't know how you can get in more in there, but every week you pop six to eight things in there. So I'm like, wow, this is cool. This is my Thursday night after church. I'm like digging in all that stuff. For the I don't miss anything. I add a lot of, I do add a lot of stuff. I, I love it. It, it makes right, it very well, valuable. We see our numbers are dwindling, so we'll wrap it up. They're going down. They're going right, down. So Friday night, um, Friday during the day, one o'clock, cookie lunch break. Marlon will be on with Han and Amber. And then come see me Saturday night. I'll be on at 7 Eastern Standard Time on the Seriously Sweet page for a two-story gnome house. It's, gonna, it, it, it's only 25 up. minutes. I already prepped my video cookies. <laughs> awesome. So we'll see you then. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, everybody.